Good morning. Today I will be translating the sermon of Reverend Danny Reyes. Peace to you, brothers and sisters. Thank God for another opportunity to worship our Lord together. For today, let us unpack Genesis chapter 1, verses 27 to 28. Let's take a closer look at this passage. Genesis chapter 1, verses 27 to 28. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every other living creature that moves on the ground. Now from these two verses, we learn that God made the universe and everything in it. God created mankind and every living creature. Having said that, let's ask the question, what was in God's heart and mind when he created the universe? First, we know that God created mankind in his own image, male and female. Now what does God's image refer to? We understand that when God created mankind in his own image, it was not according to his intrinsic characteristics, such as his omnipotence, his omniscience, and omnipresent qualities. Because if it were so, then men would have been then like miniature gods. When the Bible says God created man in his own image, he created them to resemble his moral attributes. For instance, like God, man has the concept of holiness, the notion of love, the virtue of kindness, and the mindset of righteousness. God created man with a perceptive mind, a decisive will, and with emotions. Man has the ability to be creative and to make decisions. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 says that God created mankind in his own image, male and female, he created them. And then in verse 28, God commanded them to rule over the earth. Man was placed on earth so that by ruling the earth, mankind shall manifest God's image and reveal his glory. As God's representatives, when we subdue the earth, as we submit ourselves to God, we manifest God and declare who God is. When we govern the earth accordingly, we reflect God's glory. God's hierarchy is clear, beginning with God himself, followed by man, and then matter. The earth was placed under the rule of mankind while mankind was designed to submit under God's authority. In other words, man can be regarded as God's representation on earth. Man is tasked to reflect God's character before the earth, which he is asked to rule and subdue. But man sinned and fell short of the glory of God because he refused to submit himself under God's authority. If we recall Satan's temptation to Eve, he told the woman that if she eats from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, she will be like God. He enticed Eve and Adam to rise on the same level as God. They wanted to be like God. They desired to replace God. So instead of ruling the earth and subjugating the serpent, man was tempted by it and thus sinned against God. Brothers and sisters, let us rule the earth with good governance in order that we may reveal God's glory, acknowledge and submit to God's order of things, subdue and rule the earth, for this is God's command. But after man sinned, he started to seek after the things of this world. Man has regarded his belly as his God, material wealth, entertainment as his God. We not only did not govern the earth, 
but we have allowed ourselves to be under its control. For us to manifest God's image and reveal God's glory, we must rule and subdue the earth. This is the first mindset. Second, when God gave mankind the authority to govern the earth, this in itself is a form of service. When we speak of service, we usually think of church work. Our definition of serving God is oftentimes very much limited to church-related work like church admin, ushering, and many more. We normally divide the world into two dimensions, the secular and the spiritual. The Chinese believers are very much influenced by the teachings of Watchmani. He wrote a book entitled The Spiritual Man. And in this book, he characterizes man as possessing the spirit, the soul, and the flesh. The spirit being the highest form, followed by the soul, and then the corruptible flesh. When we ask someone how he is spiritually, we are thinking about his prayer life, his devotional life, and his evangelistic endeavors. But what truly constitutes a good spiritual life is not just these. Rather, a good spiritual life is one that glorifies God in whatever work God has called him to do. Whatever and wherever we are called, be it in the medical field or in business, we must regard it as a service of God. I prefer the word profession over vocation. Vocation refers to God's call. When God calls a person to be a pastor, this is his service to God. But let me say this. Not all who become pastors can be regarded as service to God. Paul, in 1 Timothy, warns about godliness as a means to financial gain. When God calls you into business, that is your form of service. God wants us to rule the earth, and that includes our business enterprises. Whatever it is the Lord has called us to do, this becomes our service to God. So going back, by ruling the earth, God desires us to manifest His glory. That is the first mindset. Second, good governance is a form of service to God. Third, what is the definition of ruling the earth? When God commanded Adam and Eve to work in the garden, He wanted them to cultivate it to take care of it, to protect the environment. God has given us this task to mankind and not Mother Earth. When God calls you to be a homemaker, care for your family, and when you put your home in order, this is your service to God. When God blesses you with a business, run it well. That is your service to God. To protect the earth is God's desire. We must look after the earth. There are so many calamities and typhoons around. It's one thing to say that these are beyond us, but we have our part as well. We have not protected our forests from illegal logging. We fill the seas with our plastic trash. We have been negligent of our duty to protect this earth. God desires us to cultivate and protect the earth. So this is our third point. So quick review. God calls us to rule the earth so that first, we may manifest God. Second, that we may serve God. Third, that we may care and protect the earth. Fourth, God wants mankind to use his creativity in ruling the earth. With this creativity, there will be progress. So the word cultivate comes to mind. Ruling the earth with creativity will result to growth and progress. What is progress? 
people often equate the desire for progress to being discontent. When someone is content, then there is no room for progress. But this is not so. When we use our God-given creativity, we will definitely progress. Our progress as believers is not a result of discontentment, but rather it is an outcome of faithful stewardship. Now, cultivate becomes culture. Philippine culture is very interesting. We have a terminology like mauling. When you ask people where they've been, they usually give you names of the different malls. Mauling has become part of the Philippine culture. Another obvious element of our culture today is the age of mobile phones. Mobile phones have replaced cameras, watches, music recorders, and even in-person bank transactions are taken over by many mobile apps. Because of God-given creativity, people are able to build giant malls and invent latest mobile phones. These places and gadgets have become part of our culture. So going back to our passage today, we can say that when God assigns us to be stewards of his creation, we should not only fulfill our duty through good governance, but we also must make use of that creativity which God has gifted us in making progress. In doing so, we manifest God's wisdom and reveal his glory. So how about we go over the principles again? When God created man in his own image and commanded him to rule the earth, man became ambassadors on earth. One, ruling the earth according to God's design and order reveal God's glory. Two, subduing the earth is a form of service to God. Three, whatever field of profession or vocation God has called us to, we must do them well. Four, we must not only be good stewards, but we should use our God-given creativity to develop and progress. Our progress is not a result of our discontent, but rather of our faithful stewardship. And lastly, God placed Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Eden was their domain. God did not instruct them to have dominion over the heavens. God was in charge of the heavens. God designated the earth to Adam and Eve within the boundaries of Eden, up until they sinned and were driven out. God scattered mankind during the Tower of Babel, and earth was destroyed during Noah's time. In the book of Acts, it's mentioned that God created man in time and space. Wherever God has placed you, that is your so-called space. The years of your existence is your so-called time. And both time and space are God's. The length of your years and the place of your existence are your domain where you serve the Lord. When I left Vietnam and came to the Philippines, I stayed in Malabon for a year or two before I moved to Youth Gospel Center. After a few years, I pursued my studies in the Biblical Seminary of the Philippines. After graduation, I went back to Malabon. This is the domain where God wants me to serve. Cebu is the area where God wants you to serve. The Lord placed Adam and Eve in Eden. God assigns each one of us a sphere, a domain, where we can fulfill his purpose. We do our best to govern and cultivate God's creation, create progress, and glorify God. And this is the work God has called us to do. Brothers and sisters, true service is doing the will of God. And God placed you in Cebu, and he has assigned me in Malabon. We should have a sense of social responsibility to our city, our province, 
and our nation. So let's run through it again. First, ruling the earth according to God's design and order reveal God's glory. Second, governing the earth is a form of service to God. There is no such distinction as secular or spiritual. Doing God's will is service to God. Third, whatever field or profession God has called us to do, we must cultivate all things. Fourth, we must not only be good stewards, but we should use our God-given creativity to develop and progress. Our progress is not a result of discontent, but rather out of our faithful stewardship. And lastly, God has placed us in different time and space. We must make use of the time and space God has laid out for us to serve and glorify Him. God has placed you in Cebu. May the Lord greatly bless you, bless your city, and Cebu Gospel Church. May God use you in your family, in your business, and in all areas of your life to bring glory to your name.